It's the Power Up with Power Query webinar today. Uh, I, uh, I can see, we, oh, we've got 20, it's building up. Oh, they're coming in fast, the participants. Uh, I'm Christine Irons. Uh, I'm the Senior Instructor and Courseware Designer for Great Canadian Training, and I'll be doing the webinar with you today. Uh, if you've been in the webinars before, you know that I used to work at York University for many, many, many years. I won't mention how many. Uh, when I moved to Toronto, and I used to do the same, basically the same thing, uh, teaching the technical classes and doing courseware design. And then I moved back to Ottawa about five years ago. So it's it's been pushing five years now that I've been working for Great Canadian Training, uh, doing, doing the same thing. So I have a lot of background in uh, technical development and teaching. And you also know, if you've attended the webinars before, that my passion is singing. And if I'm not teaching the technical courses or running the webinars, you'll find me on stage in an ABBA show uh, where we do ABBA music and travel around um, kind of like an ABBA tribute band. So if you guys are ever interested in ABBA, check us out, SOS The ABBA Experience. Whoops, it actually just popped my presentation. Okay. So for this webinar, uh, again, we're using Zoom, and if you haven't already loaded your chat, you should have a little control toolbar on your screen where you can load the little chat screen uh, for a couple of reasons. One, if you're having any technical issues, you could just pop a message into the chat, and we have Melanie on hand here, and she will jump in and help you out with your technical issues. And... If you have any questions, you can also put them into the chat. If they are sort of quick questions, sort of related to the topic that I'm doing at the time, I may be able to glance over and tackle the questions right away while I'm teaching. Um, if not, what I'll do is at the end of today's webinar, we are going to be open to questions. So I'll go back in the history of questions. I will go through all the questions you guys have that I wasn't able to answer, uh, as well as, you know, it gives you time at the end of the webinar to sort of save up your questions if you want and put them in and I'll answer those at the end of the webinar as well. Uh, also, if something happens, if your internet drops, you get disconnected from this meeting, uh, just go back to your email and you'll be able to connect again and just pick up uh, where we are in the webinar. And our webinars are always made available after the webinar up on our YouTube channel. And as soon as they're posted on the YouTube channel, the benefit of you guys being in this webinar is you will get an email, uh, sometimes with some extra resources, which is kind of cool, but also a link to the actual webinar if you want to refer to it. So you don't have to crazily write notes as I'm teaching the webinar so you don't forget things because you can always go back to the video and watch watch the whole thing if you want or different parts of the video again. So now uh, it's kind of nice because the webinars I've been running so far over the last few years, I've had to constantly use CompuEase. I work for CompuEase and Great Canadian Training. Now I can officially say I work for Great Canadian Training. CompuEase and Great Canadian Training have merged, and we are now just under the Great Canadian Training and Consulting Company web like um, umbrella, kind of. So it's now officially Great Canadian Training. But uh, no matter what, we offer the same great team, great services, great classes. We offer software and professional skills training, public and private group training, and live instructor-led sessions. So even if you're doing the online training, it's always a live session, not a pre-recorded session. And we also do consulting services, and we have custom app development as well. And so many reasons to take courses with Great Canadian Training. One of the ones that always stands out to me, and it's funny because I was just speaking with somebody about this yesterday in one of my classes, is that our classes are always guaranteed to run. I, I, I had somebody in a Visio course yesterday say, uh, when I asked them if they have taken a Visio level one, because I was teaching a Visio level two, they said, uh, no, you know, they were registered for Visio level one twice 
two times it was canceled on them. They're at a desperate point and they decided to just jump into this Visio level two class to get some type of Visio training. And when I dug a bit further, I found out, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't our company. It was another company that canceled on them twice. And then they went with our company for the great Canadian or sorry for the Visio level two. So, you know, I pleasantly told them, well, hey, if you'd been with, with great Canadian training, your Visio level one would have happened. So that always stands out to me. Great perk. Okay. Company aside, let's get into the webinar. So what is going to be covered in this one hour webinar? Of course, packed with lots of good stuff. As much as I can get in in this one hour webinar, I will give to you. So we're going to start off with, first of all, what is Power BI? I don't know if any of you guys attended. Um, I did another webinar just recently on what is Power BI? Like, what are, what are all the Power apps? So I am teaching Power Query today, but it is also part of the Power BI package. So I'll just quickly tell you what the Power BI software is. But then what exactly is Power Query specifically in Excel? Uh, I'm going to teach you how to connect to external data sources and then clean up your data inside the Power Query Editor. And then once it's all cleaned up and transformed, how do you spit it back out into your Excel spreadsheet? So you have all that beautiful cleaned up transformed data where you can then summarize it with pivot tables or subtotals or what other data analysis tool you want to use in Excel. Uh, and I will show you uh, how we can create a pivot table now from our cleaned up data. Uh, and just for the sake of this webinar, uh, because we're limited with time, I won't be able to teach you the ins and outs and how to create a pivot table. It's just assumed that you kind of know what pivot tables are. You can just watch it if you haven't used pivot tables. We teach it in Excel level three, uh, but you'll see the kind of summarizing you can do. And then we're going to, at the end, just check out some other cool features of Power Query, other, other than just the cleanup kind of part of it. So lots and lots of good stuff. Okay, so while I run the presentation, I'm actually just going to temporarily turn off my video. I find that my video sometimes flickers when I'm doing the presentation. Uh, once we get through that, I'll turn it back on. Then you can see my cheerful face. So what is Power BI? Power BI, BI stands for Business Intelligence. It's a Microsoft software that you can actually go to the Microsoft website and download for free. There's a free version, which would probably be perfect for most people. Uh, you wouldn't have to pay for the uh, licenses. The free version has, you know, at least probably 80% of what you need. Uh, but it contains four different tools. Power Query, Power Pivot, Power View, and Power Map. So you install this software separately, and in that software application, you can use these Power Apps, and you can get the software at this website. Okay, and so don't forget, you can go back to the YouTube video, and you'll be able to find this link. You don't have to scramble and write it down. But you can work in this software separately, or Excel comes with Power Query. It's called something a little bit different. I'll show you. It's called Get and Transform. I'll show you when we're in Excel. It is part of Excel. As of 2013, it was just built into Excel. Uh, Power Pivot is an add-in. You can add Power Pivot to your Excel. So, and Power Map is there as well in 365, by the way. So some of these you can just work right inside Excel. You don't have to download and install the Power BI software. So what we're focusing on today is Power Query. Hi absolutely love Power Query. I love teaching the Power Query course. It's a one-day course. Everybody gets so excited by the time they get to the end of the course when they see what they can do in Excel and how easy it is. So we're focusing on Power Query. So what is Power Query? In a nutshell, 
it's it allows you to connect to other data sources whether it's text files other excel workbooks maybe it's an excel workbook your coworker uses uh folders full of excel files i'll talk about that in a bit uh different databases look at the list of databases you can connect to that have data um you can connect to web pages any web pages that have data tables as part of their web pages facebook linkedin uh the weather network whatever web pages that have data and bring that data into your excel workbook so you actually see that data in your workbook and it is connected to those data sources which means if somebody updates those data sources the data in your excel workbook updates so you're always looking at the updated versions of this of the data so you connect to these data sources bring it into excel but you can also use power query to clean up the data if it's not in a proper data format which i'm going to talk about in a few minutes you can clean it up you can combine information you can summarize information you can append information together you basically transform the data into something you need and then you spit it back out into excel or if you know anything about uh, power pivot there's a data model window you can put it into the power pivot data model window but you can spit it back out again from Power Query, and then you have it all beautifully cleaned up to work on it. Okay, and you're going to see all this happen. I am going to show you an example, obviously. Okay, I will get to that in a few minutes. Okay, that's basically what Power Query is. But if you're anything like me, I'm a really visual person. I really have to see it. So I am going to show you. But the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to show you an example of a good data format because that's kind of our goal. Oh, I told you I'd put the video back on. Um, that's kind of our goal is to put our data into a proper data format where we can do things like create our pivot tables and um, summarize our data through subtotaling and filtering and sorting and things like that so what what is our goal like what is good data format first of all your data should be organized in a column format where each column is a category of information and you should have your column labels or headers typed at the top so you know what each column is for if you've ever created pivot tables from data you know how important it is to have your column headers there so we have an employee id column with all the employee ids an employee name column with all the names okay so for example if you're keeping track of different months of the year you should not have a separate column for January, a separate column for February, a separate column for March kind of thing. You should have one column for the month. And then in that column, less list whether it's January or February or March down the column where each row is a record of information. Okay, so we have uh, Catherine Abel's record she's from saskatchewan her department her birth date uh if we had anything to do with the months it could list the month maybe we have the, the month of her birth date or something like that okay so you have your columns as categories you have your rows as records and i know a lot of people will tell you you shouldn't have any empty rows in the middle of your data set and you shouldn't have any empty cells it's not that you can't summarize information if you have empty rows you're going to have to go out of your way to select your data if you have empty rows so yeah empty rows do cause problems and now in the newer versions of excel empty cells should not cause problems like if i didn't have this person's salary i could leave it empty it's not going to uh cause problems with, you, with your formulas and your summarization and pivot tables anymore the early 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 versions of excel would nowadays they don't but this is proper list format this is what we're going to aim for 
when we're working it with Power Pivot in Excel. So keep this in mind because I'm about to show you another data set. Okay, so check this out. I'm going to close this. I have an Excel file here. I'll open up. Okay. Look at this. I can just hear you guys groaning. This was data that was spit out from a database. So somebody sort of kind of summarized this information in some kind of report in a database, and then they spit it out so that we could load it up into Excel and work with it. But you really could not do anything with this data. I mean, first of all, look at this. We have a title. So these are the sales for March 2020. There's a subtitle, tells us when it was exported. These two titles, these two rows are kind of useless to us. We don't really need that. We're not going to summarize those titles. And then we have, for each record, three rows of information. So we have a Toronto store, a New York store, and a London store. And so for March 1st, all three of these rows are for March 1st, for each store and what the total is for the store. And then we have a subtotal here of the three combined. And then you get into March 2nd, each store and a subtotal. And we have that all the way down for the month of March. I mean, this is just, this is just awful thinking about summarizing this. I could not create a pivot table out of this. Not only that, but look where the date and the store, the Toronto, New York and London store are. It's even combined into one cell. Like there's just so much wrong with this. So what I can do is I can bring it into the Power Query Editor to clean it up. Now, I know that you can clean it up here in Excel, but imagine how long it would take you to go through this and clean it up with all the features that you know in Excel, how long it would take you. Just imagine that. And you'll see how much quicker it is in the Power Query Editor. I can actually clean this up probably in six or seven steps. Six or seven clicks, this will be um, put into a data format that I just showed you earlier, a good data format. Doing it outside the Power Query Editor forever. But not only that, if you use the Power Query Editor to clean this up, the Power Query Editor remembers the steps you took to clean it up, kind of like a macro. It remembers the steps, which means this is just the March data. What happens when you get the April data? It's going to be in the same format as this. If you weren't using the Power Query Editor, you would have to spend all that time trying to clean it up again. But if you've already created the steps for your March data, all you have to do is connect your April data to this data set and Excel will go to town and it will do all the cleanup automatically. You guys are going to see this happen. So then every time you get a new month's worth of data in a yucky format, it'll just clean it up for you. No more work for you. Automatic. Okay. So we're going to put this into the Power Query Editor. Now you have two choices to put it into the editor. One is you can open the Excel file like I just did right now. And you can say, like, we're going to do this eventually. We're going to tell Excel, yes, take this data, put it into the Power Query editor. And it will all be part of this workbook, okay? The other option is, what if this data is from your coworker or something? You work with somebody who has this data. And you don't really want to open up their workbook, massage it all, clean it all, whatever. You don't want to do that to their workbook of data. The other option is you can do this. Now, I'm going to do this temporarily. This is not going to be my choice for putting it into the Power Query Editor. Eventually, I'm going to come back to where we are right now and just say, you know what, Excel, just load this into the Power Query Editor right from this workbook. But I could have done this. I could close this Excel file. I can start a new blank Excel workbook. And I could go to the data ribbon because it's the data ribbon that has all of our 
power query stuff. So the the beginning part of your data ribbon where it says get and transform, this is all for power query. I will warn you guys, if you happen to be looking at it on your screen, if you're in 2013, 2016, I'm in 365 right now. Uh, this is one area of the ribbon where they've changed the look of these buttons, um, how you actually bring the data into the Power Query Editor. Everything I'm about to show you, you have available. It's just that you might find it in a different location here. It might look a little bit different. But here I have a blank Excel workbook. I could click this first button here that says Get Data from File. And I'm getting it from somebody's Excel workbook. And then Excel will ask me to find their workbook eventually. Very slow today. Uh, so I have the Power Query Exercise folder. And this is the file that I loaded. So I could click on this and then click import. And what it would do is it would connect to that person's Excel file. It would import their data into my blank Excel workbook. So it's in my blank Excel workbook. They're still using their workbook. I'm now using my workbook with the connected data. And then I can go clean it up and do whatever I want to do with it without affecting their workbook. If they ever update their data in their workbook, it will automatically update the data in my workbook. All I've done is made a connection to their workbook and brought it in. And I'm not touching their version of the workbook. That's one option. But I'm going to pretend that this is my workbook. Doesn't matter to me. I don't have to make a connection to my own workbook. I'm just going to open up my workbook with the messy data. And I'm going to click in the messy data and I'm going to select it. So I'll press control A to select all the data for March. And then I'm going to go up to my data ribbon and I'm going to tell Excel, I want to throw this into the Power Query Editor. Now I'll tell you what Excel is going to want to do is turn this list into a data table. There's a feature in Excel called data tables. If I have any of you in this class that took Excel level two training, you were taught what data tables are and the benefits of data tables. You don't really have to know the ins and outs of data tables to use Power Query. Just beware that it does want your data in a data table. And I could press control T T for table right now and turn it into a data table and then load it into the Power Query window, but I don't have to. Because if I go to my data ribbon and choose this button here that I'm going to put it into the Power Query editor from a table slash range, what it will do, what Excel will do is look at my data and, and say, oh, this is not a data table. Here, let me create a data table for you. And it will turn it into a data table. So you'll see eventually when we come back to this spreadsheet, it's going to be a nice colorful table. Probably it could be blue, white, blue, white, blue, white, but that's a data table. So eventually you'll see it as a data table. But I'm going to choose here from table range. And when you create a data table, it wants to know if each of your columns has the column labels or the headers that I was talking about. In this case, this really messy data case, no, we don't really have headers for our columns. And these first two rows where the titles are, I'm eventually going to delete those. I don't even need them. So I'm going to leave this checkbox blank. No, my table does not have headers in this case. Sometimes when you put it into the data um, data editor, it does, query editor. But in this case, no. So I'm going to click OK. So remember that messy data, guys. Remember what it looked like, OK? I think you're going to be amazed. This is the Power Query Editor. Let me just uh, disable my meeting controls because I can't see half of it. OK, this is the Power Query Editor. You're still in your Excel workbook. It's just opened an extra window, a Power Query Editor window to let you clean it up and transform it. So let me explain this to you. 
you have ribbons across the top. Just like when you're working in Excel, you have ribbons with buttons to do things. The home ribbon and the transform ribbon have all the buttons you need to clean up this data. Oh, and trust me, there are so many more cleanup features here in the Power Query Editor than in your regular Excel spreadsheet. Uh, and you will, by the way, sometimes you will see repeated buttons, like you might see a button on the home ribbon, and you'll see exactly the same button on the transform ribbon. There's a bit of an overlap. They're the same button. It's just that if you happen to be on the transform ribbon, the button's there. You don't have to go back to the home ribbon kind of thing. But yeah, everything you need is on these two ribbons. The add column ribbon is you can actually do calculations in your Power Query editor create a calculated column. So the when you do a calculated column, you're adding an extra column. So you go to the add column ribbon and then decide what kind of calculated column you want to do. And then you get a view ribbon. We don't do very much on the view ribbon, ways of viewing your screen. Pretty much I leave mine the way it is. So most of the work you're going to do on home and transform. Okay. Below the ribbons on the left-hand side, it has created my first query and they called the query table one because that data, it turned it into a data table, like I told you, and it called the data table table one. If you have another data table, it calls it table two and so on and so on. So when you have a data table, it's going to call the query, whatever your data table is called. I highly advise you rename your queries to something that makes sense because sometimes um, and, and I'll explain to you what a query is in a second, but sometimes you end up with multiple queries in the same workbook and you need to know what query is what. And table one, table two, table three is not going to help you. So over on the right hand side, the query settings window, name, table one. This is where you can rename your query. So I could call it something like sales and press enter. This is now my sales query. So you see over on the left, it's now called sales. So easy to rename. And then underneath the name of the query, we have applied steps. What's going to happen is as you start cleaning up your data, deleting certain rows, splitting certain rows, formatting, whatever, you're going to see these steps start appearing on the right, kind of like macro steps. It's remembering the steps that you're taking to clean up this data. That's your query. So the sales query is going to have a certain amount of steps. That way, when you bring in your April data, it will apply all these steps of this query to your April data. As long as your April data gets connected to that table, it becomes part of that table. It will apply these steps. So you will see in a second, step by step, they're going to appear here. But every time you start a new query, guys, uh, under the applied steps, you'll always see at least two steps. One is source. And if I look in, in the formatting or the formula bar above, I know this probably won't make a lot of sense to you. This is called M code. You don't have to know M code. But the source step is just what is the source of the data here? Where is it coming from? Did you connect to somebody else's workbook? Like you might see the path to somebody else's workbook. Or in our case, the data here is coming from our current workbook. And it's from table one. And then the change type step, what Excel tries to do is it tries to format each column. It looks at the data in the column and it says, okay, this is text. Uh, it might be a date column. It might be a currency column or a number column. It tries to format your columns based on your data. It tries to guess. So it's telling us the column one here, it made it a text column. Column two is a text column. Column three is, uh, well, it says integer. Integer is a number column. You definitely, you could delete the change type step uh, and then just set them yourselves. Uh, I would not delete the source step because that's the source of your data. So just leave those alone. I suggest leaving those alone and then start to clean up your data. In the middle, of course, is where your data is. 
And down at the bottom is a status bar that tells you how many columns and how many rows you have. And it always tells you that the column profile is based on the top 1,000 rows. So if you brought in data that was 50,000 rows, you will always only see the first 1,000 rows. You can only scroll through 1,000 rows. Um, I guess Microsoft feels that's all that's necessary for you to look through it and decide what needs to be cleaned up. But when you spit it back into Excel after cleaning it up, you will have your 50,000 rows. It's just the profiling here only shows you the first 1,000. So that's your query window in a nutshell. Now what we do is we clean it up. So watch how quickly we can clean this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the first two, the top two rows, because these are just the titles, you know, the sales for March exported. We don't need those. So on my home ribbon, I have a remove columns button, and there is a little drop down underneath where you do have a couple of choices. Of course, in the Power Query training, we will go through all the different choices, but I'm going to choose, whoops, I was on remove columns, sorry, remove rows with a bunch of choices. I'm just going to choose remove top rows. And Power Query is going to say, okay, I can do that for you. How many rows at the top do you want to remove? So I'll say two, the first two rows, and I'll click OK. They're gone. Now look over on the right under Applied Steps. There's my first step. I removed top rows. If you want to undo what you did, there is no undo option. What you do is you go over to the right. If I want to get rid of this step, there's a little X to the left of it. So if I click the X, all of a sudden, the top two rows come back and the step is gone. But I actually want the step, so I'll go back to remove rows, remove top rows. I'll set it to two. Okay, and the step is back. If I made a mistake and it was really the top three rows I wanted to remove, I don't have to delete the step and then do it again, because you'll notice some of your steps over here on the right, they get a little cog wheel kind of thing. If you see this cog wheel, that means that you can kind of edit that, that there's more to this step than just a simple step of remove top rows. So if I click this little cog wheel, I can change it from two to three to four to one, whatever I want to do, but I'm going to leave it at two. So there's our first step. Second thing I'm going to do is Wherever we had blank cells, when you bring it into the Power Query editor, it puts null. It fills in a blank cell with the word null. Null means it's empty. Nothing's there. I actually don't even need column two. All it says is null, 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 total, null, 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 total. I don't need that. So I'll select column two. I'll go up to remove columns, remove columns, and it will remove the column I selected. And again, over here on the right, you have the step. Now I'm looking at this thinking, look at all these null rows. And they really are not necessary, even though I know I have null in the first column. In the second column, you're probably looking at it going, well, why would you want to remove that row? There's a total there. I don't want totals, like subtotals, in my raw data set. That's not really going to be a good format for a data set. If I ever want those subtotals, I can get them in a, in a, I can just create a pivot table. So I really do want to remove all these subtotal rows with null. And it's so easy to do. If you guys have ever used your sorting and filtering buttons, you know, up at the top, these little drop downs. If I go up to the top and click the drop down for column one, here's all my filtering options here. And I don't want to see the nulls. And when I click OK, all those null rows are removed. And I can tell you, when we spit this back out into Excel, those rows are not there. They don't exist. If we needed them back, if we wanted to, we could always come back here into our Power Query Editor, put the check mark back in, and they'd be there. But I don't want them. Uh, so another problem here is our date and the city. 
is combined or the store. These are there are stores. Uh, I want to split them. So I've selected column one. And I'm going to go to split column on the home ribbon. And I'm going to split by delimiter, meaning it's separated by something where I want to split it. And in our case, there's a space between the date and the store. There's a space and that's where I want to split. So it is separated by a delimiter, a space delimiter. And I have to tell it it is a space delimiter. But I have to be careful and look at the options I have. Um, if I leave it on each occurrence of the delimiter, I'm going to have a problem because New York, there's a space between New and York. And if I leave it on this, I'm going to end up with three columns, one for the date, one for the stores, including New, and then a third for York, which I don't want. So I'm going to choose the leftmost delimiter. So between the date and the store, that's it. And I'll click OK. And look over on the right, look at all these steps going in here. Uh, another thing I noticed, by the way, when I look down column two, some of the stores have lowercase here. There's one. I noticed that some of these are lowercase letters. And I want to make this proper case, clean it up that way. So I'll select this column. And in this case, that option is on the transform ribbon and it's under the format button. I want to format this column and I want to capitalize each word. Like, like really, if you guys use Excel, you know, this isn't that easy. I'll go back to my home ribbon. Now, how about I clean up my column headers here? So I want to rename where it says column 1.1. I'll just double click and I will call this date. Column two is, my, these are my stores. So I'll call it store. And column three, I'll just call it amount. Uh, so it's set, it's now set this column as a date column. It has set the store column as a text. I know that because there's a little icon next to the column headers. So the, the calendar means it's a date column. The ABC means it's a text column. This column, it's set it as a number column. I just want to show you guys, if you ever click where the one, two, three is, this is where you can change the formatting of the column. And I set it to currency. It's a little bit different than what you see in the regular Excel spreadsheet. It does give you your decimals for your cents and it separates your numbers with a comma, but it doesn't put the currency symbol. You will not see currency symbols in your Power Query editor. The, the formatting of the columns is mostly for doing things like if you brought in a number column and Excel accidentally made it a text column, then if you were to spit it out like that in Excel, you wouldn't be able to um, add up your numbers or, you know, create functions and calculations with your numbers because it saw it as a text column. So you definitely at least want to make your number column uh, a number column. Or currency, if it is currency, it'll add the, the um, decimals and the commas. But don't expect to see dollar symbols. Okay. So that was maybe, I don't know. That was actually, I can tell you how many clicks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight clicks. We just cleaned up all this data. So now what I want to do is spit this back into the Excel spreadsheet so I can do things like create pivot tables or whatever I want to do with it. So on the home ribbon, there's a close and load button. If I were to click the, the actual button close and load, it will default to loading it back into that Excel workbook that I was in. It would start a brand new sheet and put this in a table format on the brand new sheet. But what I'd actually like to do for today's webinar so that you can really compare is I actually want to put this on the same sheet where the messy data is. So you can see the messy data as well as the cleaned up data right in front of your face. So I'm actually going to click the drop down underneath it. I'm going to choose close and load two. So I actually have options. And I'm going to load it to, it has to be a table format, data table format, but I'm going to put it on an existing worksheet. 
let me just move this out of the way. Maybe I'll put it uh, starting right here in E1. And I'll click OK. Now, look at your messy data, which is now a data table. I told you it was going to turn it into a data table. And look at the clean data. I would not have been able to create a pivot table out of this data, but watch what I can do with this data table. I can click anywhere in the data table now, go up to insert, pivot table. And again, you know what, for this webinar, I'm going to choose just to put it on the same sheet so you can see everything here. So I'll choose an existing worksheet. Uh, maybe I'll put it right here, I guess. Okay. So I can do something like I can drag the date field and group it by the date field in the rows. So each date listed once now. I don't see all three occurrences of March 1st. I see one occurrence of March 1st, one occurrence of March 2nd. And then maybe I want to sum the amounts based on all those dates. There are all your subtotals. Remember those null rows that I just removed? All those subtotals? There they are with a grand total at the bottom. Or maybe instead of the date in the rows, I can pull the date out of the rows. Maybe I can put the store, summarize it by the store and the amount. So now I have the sum of sales for London, sum of sales for New York, sum of Someone sells for the Toronto store. Look at all the stuff I can do. I could even do this. I can put the store field in the columns. So each store is listed across the top and then put the date back in the rows. Now I can see information day by day per store. All this originally, originally coming from this messy data here. It's been turned into good data, and I can now create pivot tables based on it. And now I'm in 365, like I said, guys. I have my pivot tables task pane open here on the right, uh, but I also still have, I don't know if you guys saw, there was a Power Query uh, task pane on the right that said I have a query in this workbook. In 365, what it does now is if you have multiple task panes open, it comes up with this little bar here where you can flip between the two task panes. If you guys are in earlier versions of Excel, I you should see both task panes side by side. So you probably already see that queries and connections task pane when you work with it. I have to flip to it, but it's telling me there's a query in this workbook called sales. If I ever need to edit the query, like what if, what if I wanted for the sales dates? I wanted to know what day of the week each of those sales dates was. Then what I could do in my pivot table is I can compare Monday sales to Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, see which where I get the higher sales, Monday compared to Friday kind of thing. So I want to edit the query. I'll double click the query. It's going to throw me right back into the query editor window. I've got my date field selected. I'm going to go to the add column tab because I'm going to do what's called a calculated column to extract the day of the week. Oh, and again, watch how easy this is in Power Query. So add column, I'll go way down to this date button and I'll go down to day and I can choose to insert the name of day. That simple. If I want, I could highlight that column and drag it over beside date. Now all I have to do is go back to the home ribbon and click my button, close and load to. I could just click right on the button because it remembers where the that table is that has the data that I spit out. It's just gonna replace it. So if I click the button, Watch over here, there. Now I have the day name. So if I go back to my pivot table over here, and I have to switch to my pivot table task pane because I'm in 365, 
Now, right now, the pivot table doesn't see that I've added an extra column. What I have to do is refresh my pivot table. So I'm just going to right click in my pivot table. I'm going to go down to refresh. And look at that day name shows up. Now, maybe instead of date, I'll just take the date out. I'll put the day name. Now I can see my sales for each store day by day. But the real power of this is if you if you don't think that's powerful enough, that's just March, right? Let me go back over here. Take a look at this. My messy data over here on the left, what I did just to make our life easier is way down at the bottom, I have April's data. So I'm going to pretend, oh, somebody just gave me April's data. What I'm going to do is select all of April's data now. And I'm going to drag it up right up against my table, my March data. It becomes part of my data table. Now, all I need to do, because right now I'm still only showing March here with my cleaned up data and my pivot table is only showing March. All I have to do is go to my data ribbon and there's a refresh all button. And I'm going to click it twice. The first time I click it, it's going to update and the data in this table. The second time I click it, it will update our pivot table. Okay, so when I click refresh all first time, what it's done is it's added. Look at that, all the April data down here. So nice. And then the second time I click it, keep your eyes on the pivot table. Boom. All the numbers are updated. So every time I get a new month's worth of data, there it is. Okay, so this is just a bit of an example of what Power Query can do. Uh, just quickly, and then I'll jump to your questions if you have any. Some of the other kind of features, like, like I said, you know, I teach a Power Query course. It's a one-day course, and I show you all the ins and outs of it. Uh, some of the things you can do is if you had a folder uh, with a bunch of Excel files, so instead of keeping one Excel file with all the orders in the one Excel file, maybe somebody specifically works on the Brazil orders, somebody works on the Germany orders, the Mexico orders. So you you separated them into separate Excel files. They're basically the same file. It's just that one is Germany, one's Mexico, one's U.S. kind of thing. You can actually point to a folder and then tell Excel to append it all into the same file. In Power Query. So you're looking at all of the orders all in one file and you can create a pivot table based on everything combined. Even though they're still separate files, they're just amalgamated into your workbook as one. You can take messy data that has things like nested rows where we have location one, two, three, four. Within location one, you have revenue and expenses within location two. Really, this should be a separate column for location, a separate column for revenue. So you could turn it into a separate column for location. And, and I did this in just two clicks, I think. But then we have all the years in separate columns. So there's something called unpivot. One more click, one more click, unpivot, and it turns it into a perfect data list that you can create a pivot table out of from this. You can do the opposite. If you want, instead of use pivot tables, you can actually summarize data inside the Power Query Editor. So you can take data like this and summarize it like this type of thing, January total sales, February. You can do that right inside Power Query if you want. You can, I already showed you actually, you can add calculated columns. So you can do things like if you have the ship via field as numbers, I don't remember who one is and two is and three is. So there's a way of doing an if then kind of statement that says, if it's a one, make it speedy express. If it's a two, make it. And then it goes through and adds a column with your shipper names. Or you could add a column uh, calculating the amount of days to ship. So the ship date minus the order date. And then like we did, I added the day of the week. Uh, there's so many calculated columns you can do. You can take two separate kind of subjects. So maybe you have a, an Excel file with that lists all of your employees, their employee IDs. 
their titles and hire dates. Then maybe you have an orders table and each employee is responsible for several orders. So there is a common field between the two. We have the employee IDs for every order, but then we have the employee IDs and who the actual employee is. You can connect these through relationships. Employee ID to employee ID and create one big table who the employee is, what their title is, their all their information, as well as all their order information in one massive table where you can create a pivot table or something out of. Like so many, it's, it's like there's no end to what you can do. Okay. So it's, oh, I didn't, okay, I'll see, I'll look at your question. I just saw, I didn't see it because my, um, screen was covering your questions. I'll take a look at the question in one second. And if any of you guys have questions, start putting them in and I'm going to take a look at them. Uh, I'm just going to quickly show this to you while you're putting your questions in two minutes. Our Great Canadian Training website, uh, some courses that you may be interested in. If you like this Power Query course, uh, I'm going to show you where the Power Query course is, as well as some related courses. So you really will find them under Microsoft. There is the Power BI training. So I talked about that at the beginning. If you do want to take full Power BI training, we have the fundamentals of Power BI. We have becoming a Power BI Pro. And then there's something called DAX functions uh, that you do in Power Pivot, which is part of the uh, Power BI training. So that's an option if you want to do the full Power BI. If you don't want to do that, then just under general Excel training, uh, we have the, we have Power Pivot. So there is Power Pivot training, uh, but we also at the bottom have Excel Power Query. Here's the one day course on Power Query. And also, you may be interested in the dashboards courses because you know what you can do? You can take you can take messy data, bring it into Power Query, clean it up, and spit it back out and create dashboards out of it. So it kind of all goes hand in hand if that's something you're interested in. So you might want to check out the Excel dashboards. But lots of good stuff. Lots and lots and lots of good stuff. Okay. Hey, I didn't do too bad this time. I have some time for questions. So let's see. Do you have to save the file that was created in Power Query or is it tagged to the... Okay. So when I save this Excel file, let me get rid of my... Um, give me a second. My meeting controls. When I save this file called Exploring Power Query, it saves it with the query inside as part of this Excel file. So every time I open the Excel file, it knows there's a query attached. And all I have to do is double click this, um, this query and it brings me back to the Power Query editor. So it's saved with the actual file. And by the way, if you ever close this task pane, try to close it, uh, the Power Queries, the query is still there. All you have to do is go to your data ribbon and load your queries and connections. There's a button queries and connections and it brings it back. And it will tell you how many different queries you have in this workbook. And you can always edit the queries. So it's part of the actual file, the Excel file. So there is no save inside the actual Power Query editor. It's part of the file. Oh, it came in. What's the difference between Power Query and Power Pivot? Okay, because I was just talking about Power Pivot. So I don't know if you guys noticed, I have a Power Pivot ribbon here because I teach Power Pivot. Power Query is on your data ribbon here, but Power Pivot, you can load a separate ribbon called Power Pivot. The difference is like the main differences are um, Power Pivot allows you to bring in files that have things like hundreds of millions of rows of data. Like your Excel spreadsheets can handle up to about a million rows. If you have 50 million rows, you will not be able to load it into Excel 
you can only load it into Power Pivot. So Power Pivot can actually handle a lot more data. It allows you to create relationships between separate pieces of data, kind of like what I just showed you Power Query can do. If you have your employees and you have your orders, you can create a relationship. But Power Pivot makes it easier to create the relationships. And you can create multiple relationships. So if you have several different data sources that you want to connect all together to create a pivot table out of all those data sources, it's really easy to do in Power Pivot. And Power Pivot has these functions called DAX functions, which are ways of doing calculations, kind of like you do calculations in Excel, but Power Pivot has specialized date and time intelligence DAX functions to make things easier. Things that could you pull your hair, hair out trying to do in Excel, you can do in Power Pivot. The only, I don't know if you want to call it a drawback. The only drawback of Power Pivot is that when you bring it into the Power Pivot window and you do all these things, you cannot spit the data back out into the Excel spreadsheet like we, what we did here and then just use your regular Excel features with it. The end result of Power Pivot is pivot tables. So your data actually stays in the Power Pivot window, a separate window, just like that query editor window is a separate window. It stays in that separate window. Yes, you do go back to Excel, but it's a blank Excel workbook, like a blank Excel worksheet, and you can create pivot tables out of the data that's in that window. That's your end result. Whereas Power Query, you can spit the whole, all the data back out here and then do whatever you want to do. Use all your Excel features. And I like that. But you know what? Sometimes you don't have a choice. If you have a ton of data, then it might have to go into Power Pivot. I took the Power Pivot course and you taught DAX functions. Can you? Oh, yeah, the DAX functions I was just talking about. No, you can't use DAX functions in Power Query. But when you're in Power Query, when you go to load your Power Query data back to Excel, and I showed you that uh, close and load two, where you can have choices of where to load it. I had made the choice of loading it back onto the spreadsheet uh, right next to my messy data for my sales data. But one of the other options instead was close and load it to a data model window. A data model window is Power Pivot. So you can take it from the Power Query window and load it right to the Power Pivot window. Do what you have to do with DAX functions and then create pivot tables out of it. So there is that option, but you can't do DAX functions right inside Power Query. Any other questions, guys? I hope you are as excited about Power Query as I am. Oh, you're so welcome. I, I hope, because I really love Power Query. I mean, this was a game changer for me when I learned how to do Power Query and the kind of things that I can do inside Excel. It's all part of Excel. So, yeah. You're so welcome, guys. Okay, so you guys should be receiving an email, um, hopefully today, if not today, tomorrow, uh, with the link to this webinar. So you can go back and you can refer to it again if you want to play around with it. Okay, have a wonderful afternoon, everybody. Oh, wait. Oh, actually, just before you disconnect, the one thing I did forget to show you, just in case you guys are interested, it just hit me right now. We do have the free resources. If you haven't attended a, a webinar yet, uh, then I wanted to point out our free resources, like just fantastic free resources. Uh, like we have um, our the different webinars that are coming up that you can register for. So our next one is micromanaging, start delegating. So Joel will uh, be doing that. Um, lots and lots of different webinars coming up. Uh, we have our blogs, we have our podcasts, we have free file downloads. So if you can, check out our free resources on our Great Canadian Training website. Okay, take care, everybody. Have a wonderful day.
Bye, guys.